G'day, I'm Ziggy D, and welcome to my reveal of Path of Exile's 3.7 expansion, Legion. In the heat of battle, a single moment may fill an eternity. Path of Exile's history is one filled with war and bloodshed. In Legion, we'll discover armies of Rayclass' five greatest generals locked in eternal battle inside of the domain of timeless conflict. In classic Exile fashion, we'll be intervening in these battles to satisfy our unceasing lust for carnage and loot. Legion will also be getting us ready for battle with the biggest overhaul to melee combat to date. I'll be covering all of this and more in this reveal video, so strap in because it's a big one. Legion is unashamedly GGG's fresh take on one of the community's all-time favourite leagues, Breach. In each area, we'll find a monolith, which upon activating will reveal two armies frozen right in the midst of battle. There's a short time after activating where we can shatter the bonds of time, locking them in place. And when the initial timer expires, the armies will disappear, and all freed soldiers will unfreeze and continue their battle, which we will then be caught in the middle of. The idea here is a simple one that should prove effective. Hit the monolith and free as many enemies as possible. Of course, if we free too many to handle, we may be overwhelmed, so there's a solid element of player agency in determining the level of risk versus reward that we take on. Some special enemies will have symbols over their heads for bonus rewards that they'll drop on death, and there'll also be special chests containing additional loot that we can tag. With a limited time window, players will have to scout out and free as many desired rewards as possible. Legion monsters can also drop splinters which will combine to form emblems representing their legion. This is a familiar concept to fans of Breach, and these emblems give us access to the endgame of Legion, entering the domain of timeless conflict. Emblems from different legions can be placed together within the map device to open the domain where these armies engage in fierce battle. We'll be able to hunt down special loot enemies and chests as well as fight the generals of the legions. Of course, placing two emblems together, such as the Templar and the Vile, will open a domain where these two legions will be in the middle of battle. But, as you may have guessed, a more dangerous battle with more valuable rewards can be found by placing three or even four emblems together to access a three or four way battle. But wait, there is indeed more. Through a certain unknown challenge, we'll be able to, for the first time ever, unlock a five slot map device. This will of course allow us to take on the ultimate endgame of Legion, a battle between all five of the Legions at once. The five slot map device will also allow players to further modify regular maps with up to four fragments or scarabs for more juicy regular endgame content. In addition to the varied rewards dropped by special monsters in the Legion, there will of course also be a selection of new and revamped uniques themed after each of the Legions. The first example I have here today is Akuna's Will, which seems to come from the Marraketh. These gloves allow you to raise zombies without needing corpses, and it makes it so that your zombies count as corpses. The potential here is rather exciting as it means you can use skills such as Detonate Dead or Body Swap on your zombies. However, beware of enemies or strong boxes that can detonate corpses, which may well turn this mechanic against you. GGG has also taken a new approach here to revamping some of the less used and weaker unique items by actually removing them from the regular drop pool, giving them some new features and adding them as a drop to the legions. Vol's Protector is an example of one such unique which will now be likely available through the Templar Legion. A new keystone passive, Inner Conviction, has been added to the item. This keystone passive causes you to gain power charges instead of frenzy charges and gives your power charges an added spell damage bonus. Legion is not stopping there though. With incubation items, get ready to hatch some eggs containing even more loot. Incubation items are a new type of currency that modify a piece of gear with a kill counter, which when reached will pop out a guaranteed item. You can have multiple items incubating at once, basically as many as you have items equipped. There are different type of incubations, like this Blacksmith Incubator, which drops a random unique weapon when you've killed 2,000 monsters. 
This system kind of came out of nowhere, but it seems to be GGG experimenting with some alternative ways of getting somewhat deterministic loot. Also, the idea of incubating little loot eggs is kind of cute. I'm personally ready to experiment with becoming a mama bird. The Legion loot that I'm most excited for, however, is the new game-changing jewels that will also be available from the higher end of Legion content. Each of the five Legions has a unique jewel, and these will modify the passive tree in a rather spectacular fashion. The Var Legion jewel, for example, corrupts the passives within its radius, completely changing what they do. This even includes keystones which can become corrupted keystones. Even more exciting is that these jewels are different every time, dropping with different seeds that change the passives in different ways. So two Vile jewels will give different corruptions to the same passives. This to me seems like such a game changer. I personally love the design of the Elder Jewels Watcher's Eyes with their huge variety and potentially ridiculous combos, it's always exciting to identify one. The design of these Legion Jewels seems to follow that concept and is taking it to crazy levels since it's going to add a whole new level of build customization. Chris also mentioned to me that the seed of the jewel will be identifiable through the jewel's flavor text, which will mean that the community can explore these jewels together and of course, trade them. We don't even know yet what the other Legion jewels will do, but I'm already super excited about the Vile Legion jewels alone. But that's enough about loot for now. Let's talk about the other massive set of changes coming to the Legion expansion, the complete melee revamp. Most importantly here, GGG has improved the melee experience at the fundamental level with changes to the core gameplay mechanics. Chris Wilson said that melee has been described by players as clunky, especially at the early stages of the game, and they wanted to address most of these core issues with melee in one go. So let's go through what that means. There's a lot going on here, so get ready. Firstly, you can now cancel attack animations. You are free to do this right after damage has been dealt, or before if you change your mind and need to avoid an incoming attack. This change alone is designed to make melee combat feel much more responsive, and will afford us better control over our characters, though I do imagine it may take some getting used to. This change in particular is tied in with all movement skills now having instant activation, which means you can animation cancel a slow attack that would have locked you in place with a movement skill to avoid an incoming attack. Additionally, a selection of new low-level movement skills have been added to help many classes in the early game, such as Dash, this quick dodging dexterity skill. As a personal note, I have to imagine that these combined changes alone will have a pretty big impact on the responsiveness of combat, and will likely see a rather large increase in the skill ceiling, which is exciting in the context of PoE racing and speed leveling. There is more though. All melee attacks can now hit multiple adjacent enemies with a small melee splash style effect. This should improve the early game for a lot of skills as well as making it easier to connect with desired targets if there are several monsters in the area. The timing of when damage is dealt relative to animations has been improved as well, along with fixed ranged indications for all attacks in the game. I think this clip of a two-handed heavy strike on Doresso communicates it pretty well how much more accurate the blows look and feel. The animation system overall has been overhauled too, with support for animation chaining and dynamic speed changes. This should all help the combat look and feel better and more accurate. Melee targeting has also been improved, with the game now automatically retargeting a new monster near your cursor if you kill your current target but are still holding down the attack button. This should make it so that spam clicking isn't necessary to ensure that you have a target when attacking with melee skills. Various other systems have been changed as well, which will likely be further detailed in the coming weeks. Accuracy, for example, is no longer capped at 95%, so that you can reach 100% accuracy without needing Resolute Technique. And of course, this expansion also contains an end-to-end -end rebalance to melee attacks in a similar fashion to how the last expansion went over spells. This of course includes some very anticipated reworks for some of the skills like Cyclone, which is now a channeled skill. With all of the improvements to melee gameplay and with players having much better control over their characters, GGG has also decided to work on the opposite side of things as well, the enemies. These improvements have been especially focused on some of the slow and somewhat dated early game content. The changes are rather expansive including improved monster AI, new monster skills, better boss fights, and more polish generally to the early areas that GGG says will bring them up to a 2019 standard. You can see some of this improvement already in the improved early boss fights. 
You expect to see monsters perform much more signaled attacks, and with the improvements on the player side of things, skilled movement, positioning, and dodging is now much more possible as a result. You can see a much more noticeable wind-up on skills and even the melee attacks of bosses. Many of the early boss fights have also been made generally more intense and exciting with new skills and more dangerous attacks. Kaduku item crafting rituals are about to become a whole lot more intense. Endgame has not been forgotten as well with many bosses and Atlas maps reworked. This includes the Sunken City boss, the Gardens boss fight, and finally an improved Coward's Trial unique map. Mostly we're seeing improved boss fights with more monster spawns, abilities, and some pathing and layout improvements to less well liked maps. Legion also includes two new melee focused build archetypes that group some of the new skills and mechanics. The Rage Berserker and the Blood and Sand Gladiator. While Berserker and Gladiator most closely align to these new archetypes, many of the new skills and tools are available for other builds to use as well. The Blood and Sand archetype features a new stance mechanic, which allows you to reserve some mana to enter either blood or sand stances, which you can change between at will. Blood stance is focused on up-close damage for tougher enemies, and sand is focused on area killing and speed. Blade Storm is a new melee skill that slashes enemies around you and creates a blood storm or a sand storm depending on what stance you're in. Some old skills like Lacerate will also interact with the new stances. These additions also come alongside a rework to the Gladiator Ascendancy. The second new archetype is the Rage Berserker. Berserker and the Rage mechanic have been overhauled in Legion, with Rage no longer draining life by default. The Berserker will, however, have a mechanic that restores the health draining effect in order to gain increased power. Rage now also interacts with several of the new and revamped skills. The new skill Chain Strike is a movement attack that pulls you to enemies, damaging them and generating rage. Move over Flicker Strike, Brutus Boys are coming through. There will also be a new skill called Berserk that rapidly consumes rage to give you more damage, attack speed, and movement speed, and less damage taken. The Berserker Ascendancy will be featuring reworked bonuses that interact with both rage and the Berserk skill. This is only a basic overview of some of the new skills and archetypes coming in Legion, with more details to come over the next few weeks. Now that's what I have for now as far as new reveals go, so I wanted to share some of my initial thoughts. In the shadow of the complexity of some of the recent leagues, a straightforward combat-oriented league mechanic is what a lot of players have been asking for. Legion looks like it'll fit the bill, and modelling it after Breach is a promising idea, of course. Legion could well prove to be a better Breach, with the player agency over how much challenge we take on in each encounter. Breach had the issue where you would sometimes get empty Breaches, and other times you'd be overwhelmed by a crazy Breach full of Tull Frostbladers. Legion's design of giving us control over how many monsters we fight could well be a real winner. Only time will tell how good it feels to actually play, of course, but Legion does win a lot of points with me personally, thanks to its reward structure. Build changing unique design and jewels that follow high variance, high impact design of the Watcher's Eye jewels are an exciting thing to chase after, I think. And the idea of getting in the middle of four or five way battles is quite an exciting premise to me. It's always been one of my favourite things in games when you come across NPCs duking it out. The melee changes look to be exceeding my personal expectations of what we'd be getting as well. I did expect new skills and reworks, maybe with some improvements to animations and such, but things like animation cancelling, instant move skills and targeting changes are a real game changer for the game. I think there is some potential here that some of these changes may introduce new problems that we have to deal with, like players accidentally cancelling attacks when they didn't mean to, but this may just require an adjustment period. The potential for these changes greatly increasing the skill ceiling of racing and competitive play is just very exciting to me, especially since the competitive scene has really been ramping up of late. This is just honestly way more than I expected personally when GGG said they'd be doing a simpler league mechanic and expansion. Especially since so much work is happening on 4.0 and ExileCon at the moment. But that's enough from me, I'm curious what you guys think. Does this take on the Breach style get you amped? Is this what you were hoping for with Melee? Please feel free to leave your thoughts and questions in the comments below and I'll answer what I can and make some follow up videos if I can as well. I'm looking forward to spending the entire reveal day going over your comments and reactions. It's almost become a bit of a ritual for me at this point. It's one of my favourite things about doing what I do is soaking up those initial reactions. Anyway, that's it for now, guys. I'll see you in Legion. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.